Number 26. Indigenous people sometimes cook in watertight baskets by placing hot rocks into water to bring it to a boil. What mass of 500 degrees Celsius rock must be placed in 4 kilograms of 15 degrees Celsius water to bring its temperature to 100 degrees Celsius? If 0.025 kilograms of water escapes as vapor from the initial sizzle, you may neglect other whatever. So, all right. We have this rock, it's at 500 degrees Celsius. We've got to figure out what mass of the rock is necessary in order to bring this water to a boil. So we basically realize that this is all this is is a heat transfer problem, right? Now, once you realize that it's a heat transfer problem, it's very important that you set up the basic heat transfer equation. It's basically conservation of energy, all right? It, 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 that's essentially what this works out to be initially. It's so it, it's actually very, very simple. We know that the heat will be lost from this object because it's hotter. And then the heat will be gained by this water because it's cooler. All right. So I can say the heat lost by the rock. Okay. That should be negative. You got to plug in the negative sign. Will then equal the heat gained by the water. Okay. Now, they added this, so that should be fairly straightforward. They added this nice little little piece of complexity here just to make our lives a lot more interesting. And what we have to now do is also realize that the heat being gained by the water is not only the heat necessary to take the initial temperature uh, of 15 degrees Celsius and bring it up to 100 degrees Celsius, but there's also energy that is being used to vaporize this mass of water. So what that basically means now is that the Q of the rock, right, that it lost heat, will equal then the Q of the uh, liquid water that was brought to the boiling point plus the heat necessary to vaporize this mass of water, okay? So now this is our equation. Let's start expanding, all right? Let's start expanding. So the Q, all the, the anytime you're talking about just a, uh, the heat associated with a change in temperature you're using this formula, anytime you're talking about uh, heat transfer involving a phase change, you're using that formula at the top. All right. So now basically, um, it's going to be negative. Then the mass, and I'll put this in brackets, this will be the mass of the rock multiplied by the specific heat of the rock multiplied by the change in temperature of the rock. Okay. That will equal then, the Q of the water, so that is the uh, mass of the water multiplied by the uh, specific heat of the water multiplied then by the uh, change in temperature of the water plus then the, uh, right, I'm going to be using this formula at the top, so I was just thinking about what I want to say. This is then the heat of vaporization, basically, and we're going to have to use that formula at the top. So this is then the mass that vaporized multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization, okay? So why don't we plug in some things we know and let's see where we can go from here. So uh, the mass of the rock is what we're looking for, so that is our unknown. So I'm just gonna leave that as M sub R. The specific heat of the rock, they told is similar to granite. When you look it up, it's 840 joules per kilogram Celsius. So we're gonna plug in 840. The change in temperature, right, of the rock is going to be now, it's gonna start at 500, and what's it going to end at? Well, it doesn't say, right? But it, we're, we're trying to find the minimum mass, basically, in order to bring the liquid water here on up to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? So what that means is basically the equilibrium temperature after this rock gets put into the water. And at the end of the problem, this whole system in here, including the rock, will be at 100 degrees Celsius. All right, so that's the final temperature. So that should be 100 minus then 500. That was the initial. It's always final minus initial. So this now equals the mass of the water that, remember, you want to don't just think of, oh, the mass of the water, great, I can just plug it in. This is the mass of the water that was brought from 15 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So what value should I plug in? If you said four, it would be incorrect. You might be saying, well, what do you mean? It's right here, right? It told it to us in the problem. Well... As soon as you place in the rock, right, remember the thing that they uh, told us here to uh, increase the joy in our life. Uh, they had told us that this little mass of water will escape now 
right, as basically water vapor from the initial sizzle. So the mass then that will be left to bring from 15 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius is basically four kilograms minus the 0 0.025, okay? It might make an insignificant difference, but technically that's how you would calculate it. So this would have to be four kilograms, okay, 4.00 minus then the 0 0.025, okay? Then the specific heat of the water, that's just a constant, 4184. Then the change in temperature of the water. Now the water, again, we already said it, you know, four times, right? The mass, the temperature is going to go, the final will be 100, and the initial is 15, so you plug those in, okay? Now plus, now this thing will be positive. Anytime you go from the phase change, that is, anytime you go from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, the value here is positive. If you move in the opposite direction, it will be negative. Keep that in mind. Let me just move this over slightly so I have a little bit more room. Bear with me. All right. And now uh, the mass of then the water that was vaporized is this value. All right. So the 0 0.0250. So 0 0.0250. Multiply then by the, and I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to write it. Uh, beneath it, multiply then by the heat of vaporization. Now, this is in kilojoules. Everything else in here is in joules, so please do your conversion. So there's going to be 2,256,000 joules, okay? Just multiply this by 1,000. And now let's start simplifying some stuff, okay? Let's start doing some math. So we'll take the 840, 840, multiply it then by essentially negative uh, 400, Right, so this is going to be, and then there's a negative outside, so it's a double negative, which means it will become positive. So this will be three, three million, right, three hundred thirty-six thousand, or excuse me, three million, three hundred sixty thousand. Okay, times then the mass of the rock will equal now, and we'll do the math out over here. So it's going to be four minus point zero two five. Then take that value, multiply it by four one eight four. Then take that value and multiply it by, oh, hold on, plug the sign in wrong. Then multiply that by now 100 minus 15. So this is now going to be, it looks like 1,413,669. Okay. And then do the last piece over there plus now the, actually, wait a minute. Why don't I just do this all at once, right? Instead of writing two separate steps. So let me add to that now 0 0.025 times 2256000. Okay, so now we have, just gonna adjust this ever so slightly. So this is now going to be 1 million, I think, right? 1,470,000, 69. Okay, and now all you gotta do is divide this on out, right? That's all we have to do now. So the mass of the rock here, so the mass of the rock will be equal to and let's do the math. So we get that. And let me just make sure the numbers are good. Yep, everything looks good. Okay. So now we're going to take that value of 1,470,069. Divide it now by the uh, 3,360,000. Just make sure I plug it in right. Okay, great. That looks good. And let me just make sure the number... Oh, nope, 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 nope. I added one extra zero there. Sorry, guys. I was just thinking about it as the number was going to work, and I'm like, that's a really small mass. I added one, right? I'm sure some of you caught me. I added one extra zero here. So it's really 336,000. Okay, so let me just make that adjustment. I'm just trying to see if you're paying attention. 336,000. So those of you who caught me, good. Those of you who didn't, it's okay, because I did it myself. See, there's all, there's, everyone's a winner here. Everyone is a winner. So we're going to do that division, and when we do it now, it's going to be 4.38 or so, 4.38, and that's going to be in terms of kilograms, all right? So you're going to need basically the same mass, you know, of uh, the same mass as the mass of the water you're trying to heat up, and this rock is going to be at 500 degrees Celsius, and that's just to bring this temperature of the water up 85 degrees Celsius. It's kind of incredible. The reason why is because the specific heat of water is so large. All right, and the specific heat then of, of granite is, is much smaller. 
So anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to help us out. Subscribe. And if you think your friends would find these videos interesting, if they're taking physics, even in a different class, uh, they can still do a lot of practice problems here and then have uh, solutions. So they might find that useful as well. Appreciate it very much. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.